Hey, I'm Matt. This video is all about something that no one really likes to talk about, sexual exploitation. The thing is, no one really thinks it happens here in Newfoundland and Labrador, but it does. It didn't take me long to realize he wasn't who I thought he was. I wish she could see the pain she's caused in my life, and I just want her to stop. I knew there was something not right. I knew it was too good to be true. I just knew it. In this video, you'll see a bunch of things. Ways to find out what it is, and if you know someone who's been through it, what to do and where you should go. And you'll hear the words of people who've been through this. It's hard stuff. They wrote what happened to them, and actors will read it. Some of this is hard to hear, especially when you think this could have happened to your sister, or your cousin, or your friend. The problem is, it happens, and we can't ignore it. First up, an actor reading the words of someone who's lived through this. These are real letters and real things that happen here in Newfoundland and Labrador. This is Amanda's letter. Remember that guy I told you about? The one who treated me like a princess, held my hand, and bought me nice things? I knew it was too good to be true. I just knew it. He started talking about all the money he had spent on me and all the expensive places he brought me. He told me that things would have to change and that I would have to start paying him back. I cried so hard telling him that I loved him and that I would do whatever he wanted. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. One time, he dropped me off at this guy's house and then my boyfriend said, just do whatever he says. That was the night my whole life changed. I crossed over into a whole new way of life. Some of you might think that this is almost unbelievable. And some of you might think that you've seen or heard something like this. Unfortunately, this is real. And in this video, we only touch on a few stories. There are lots more. There's a coalition of community groups against the sexual exploitation of youth. It's called Casey. It was formed a few years back when it became clear that this was a big problem. In this video, you'll see interviews with some of the members of Casey. I think people do believe that this doesn't happen here and this is a big city issue, but uh, we're certainly here to tell people it is an issue. I think, turn on your radio, you know, watch the TV screens. We see this in the news all the time in this province. It's a real issue and we need to be aware of it and we need to be in tune with it. What is youth sexual exploitation? It's when an older youth or an adult takes advantage of someone under the age of 18 for sexual purposes. These young people are involved in the sex trade and are sexually exploited through prostitution, phone sex, stripping, and pornography. And you know what? It's not a free choice that these young people make. They are victimized and abused by predators. This happens to girls and guys too. And what you'll find in this video is that the people who exploit them find ways to make them do it. Some of this will shock you. So what do you think is the average age of someone getting into this? Take a guess. 14. 14 years old. Surprising? Probably. These things, prostitution, pornography, they happen in places you might not think. Like your school, in bars, on the internet, sometimes in a restaurant, even at the mall. And you never know who's out there when watching what you're doing when you're on the net. There's all these fancy programs, of course, that can, can monitor what you're typing in and your keystrokes and what you're entering in on, on, the, on, your, on your desktop. And, and at the end of the day, you can never be too sure who's out there watching what, what exactly you're doing. So, you know, you need to be really cognizant and, and careful as to what you're, what you're doing and what you're up to. Stephanie's letter. I was 13. I got kicked out of the foster home I was living in and ended up in a group home. I met this girl there and we were best friends. 
We used to hang out at this place. The guy who worked there, Steve, was really nice. He always let us hang out in the basement, and he always gave us drinks and acid and weed. One day, he came down with a camera and started taking pictures. And the next time, he told us to take our clothes off. Sometimes he paid us, and we always did drugs when we went there. I knew something was not right, but my best friend was doing it, and Steve was really nice. All of a sudden, one day, the RNC showed up with a social worker and told me I had to leave town. It took months before I realized what had happened to me, and Steve wasn't my friend. <laughs> So you might be thinking, why would someone do this? We call it survival sex. These young people trade sex for a place to stay, food, drugs, and alcohol. When you're desperate enough, you'll do what you have to. Young girls and guys are lured into this. This is not about choice. This is about being forced into uh, a sex trade activity. This is about often survival. This is never about choice. This is about an adult exploiting a young person. So it's really important that we not blame victims in this. This is uh, adults perpetuating really child abuse is what this is. Are you asking yourself, who does this happen to? The truth is, it could happen to anybody. But here are the risk factors for people who get trapped in this. Young people who've experienced sexual, physical, or emotional abuse. There's biological factors, conditions like fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, sometimes a low self-esteem, or a sense of not fitting in, drug and alcohol abuse, and leaving home at an early age. Lots of times young people run away from abuse or because they're not happy at home. If someone's sexually abused and they leave home, they're twice as likely to be sexually exploited. Not having a stable place to live or a strong relationship with an adult makes you an easier target for someone to exploit. Well, some young people that I've spoke to have been in situations where they've had to trade sex for their drug addictions. Uh, the people who are selling them drugs are often expecting them to have sex with maybe some other clients connected to the drug trade in order to pay off their drug debts. Some young people have had to have sex with cab drivers for a ride home, or some people would be having sex with, um, with their landlords maybe because they're afraid they're going to get evicted, or maybe they don't have enough money for their rent, or, or things like that. And uh, you know, they would call that survival sex when you talk to them, but in actual fact, it is sexual exploitation. This is Michael's letter. I knew even at eight or nine years old, I knew what my mom did when one of her friends came over. She would send me to my room and tell me, don't make any noise because I'm going to try to get a loan off him. But our walls weren't soundproof so I could hear them. So I'd lie face down with my pillow over my head and wait. I remember one night I was lying in bed and I heard mom screaming and a man yelling, so I snuck downstairs to find my mom laying on the floor covered in blood and the stranger telling her that it would be the last time that she ever ripped him off. I screamed and I ran over and I punched him three or four times, but he just smacked me in the face and walked out of the house. I knew that this was another one of her friends that she'd brought over. And this kind of a night was normal. Once I was sitting with a friend at the war memorial, drinking coffee and eating Timbits. And I saw a car pull up and my mom got out. She walked up and down the road slowly until a car blew the horn and she got in. I nearly died when my friend said, isn't that your mom? I know mom's still doing this. I worry when I don't see or hear from her for days or weeks. I wish she could see the pain she's caused in my life, and I just want her to stop. Sexual exploitation can happen very close to home. It does happen here in Newfoundland, and I would suggest to you maybe it happens every day. 
and it can be and it can constitute something as simple as a, a, a simple text message or an inappropriate touch or an inappropriate comment made by a person in authority I mean something as simple as that and uh, you know just you need to be aware be aware of where you are what you're doing and what the ramifications are of your actions So let's talk about who gets young people into this. Most often it starts off as fun, or at least what you think is fun, and then things go wrong. You might think of a pimp as someone you see on TV, but a pimp could be your boyfriend, your friend, and it's not always a guy. Sometimes it's a woman. How does a pimp lure someone into this? This is how they do it. A young person gets lured away from their support network until they're completely isolated or separated from friends and family. They're being manipulated, and the young person starts to take on street values. And then the pimp starts taking control of their life, usually with drugs and alcohol. This is Lisa's letter. I met a guy one night who was so nice. He was kind and funny and bought me drinks. I knew pimps in St. John's who weren't so nice, and I knew this guy was different. All the positive attention made me feel needed and important. Before I knew it, we were headed out of the province. He had money, and I felt safe with him. It didn't take me long to realize he wasn't who I thought he was. He was a pimp, and he knew who I was when he approached me. He knew all the right things to say. It was set up. When we got to Ontario, he took all my IDs and my cell phone. I was scared. I knew I didn't have a choice. I was there to make money for him. I didn't use drugs because if you're using and strung out, you make less money, and I was expected to make a lot of money. All the money I made, he took. I never saw a cent of it. Once I crossed that line, it was done. And now I don't belong on the other side. I met lots of girls who have been doing this for years. Fortunately, I made it out. But lots of girls haven't. After all that, if you think you might know someone who's at risk, here's what you look out for. Their attitude might change. They start getting more aggressive and they withdraw from family and friends. Their behavior might be a tip off. Are they sleeping out, not coming home? Are they protective of friends and a boyfriend and looking for more freedom? Often the routine starts to change. Grades drop or they drop out of school and sometimes run away. Language, usually people who get trapped in this start using a new name or nicknames. And watch out for clues around the house. A bag with a change of clothes, pack ready to take, Maybe there's a new cell phone in it, and drug stuff. If you take anything away from this, just know that it happens, and that it can happen to anyone. Just stop and think about how it makes you feel when you hear about this stuff. It's not only that uh, men are taking advantage of young women, we've had boys in our, in our cities and in our communities that have been sexually exploited, and we've had women involved in the exploitation as well, so this is an issue that everybody needs to be educated and we need to have our eyes and ears open to protect the young people that we care about in this community. You know, when you hear about it on the news, that's where it happens. And then you say, oh, it can never happen here, but, you know, that's, that's when it does. It's when you need to look out. and. I know if anything like that ever happened to me, I'd be absolutely terrified. Everyone would be kind of confused because, you know, they, and they wouldn't really believe that it happened in our school because it's such a far-fetched idea to, in everyone's mind. It hits very close to home. It's not the, the big picture is, you know, most people think of sexual exploitation. Well, at least the first thing that comes to my mind is these countries where you see these children being exploited by dirty old men. It's not necessarily the case. It really surprised me when I heard that it was happening a lot in Newfoundland, more than people expected. And it's just, I'm amazed that humans can do this. 
I know people who have been caught up in situations like these and I think that they can definitely get out of it. They just need to believe in themselves. I'm always really moved by how resilient young people are to be able to move through such horrible, horrible situations and really be able to take care of themselves at the end. Thanks for watching this video. Watch out for your friends and don't do anything that doesn't feel right. We can stop this from happening. Casey is an initiative of Community Youth Network, St. John's. Please contact 709-754-0536 or visit www.cyn-stjohns.nf.ca. That's www.sin-stjohns.nf.ca.